Hello everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to create textures that can be animated for your characters. So in this case we have a nice blinking animation going on. It looks great. So doing this is going to save you a lot of time when it comes to animating and modeling characters because if you're trying to go for a 2D style then uh, this is going to be the easier way. It's a little bit of a tedious process but once you get the hang of it it's pretty easy and you could use this for a whole plethora of different projects. So today I'm going to show you how to do it on this model right here. Thank you, thanks to my wonderful student Sophia. She's letting me borrow this character just to show this demonstration. And normally what you would do is, I'm going to delete this right now, is I would take my model right here, I would create a duplicate of it, and I would delete everything but the faces that I'm going to be using as the character, or the character expressions. So in this case, these faces right here are going to be the ones I'm going to use. So with that being said, I would probably also export this or save it as a separate file just because it's a little easier to work with. I don't want to have to deal with all these other things going on. So let us go and show you my expressions for now. So these are the expressions I have to work with. These are also done by Sophia. And we have about 12 different expressions. We have different variations of blinking, different uh, emotions through the eyes. And normally you would do your mouths differently as well as a separate piece. But I'm going to leave this up here. I'm going to use Photoshop for this process just because it's going to make things a lot easier for me to work with later on. So it's also going to be good to refer to them. So let's get to it. I'm just going to minimize these for now. And I'm going to open up my face tutorial or my eyes tutorial <clears throat> so let's just open that up there we go so like I said before this is just those faces that we took from the original character pretty simple stuff looks all nice and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna first go into UV editor and as you can see it's already UV'd but if you want to UV this yourself you want to use something called the planar UVing. What I'll do is I'll go through the option box and I'll make sure it's set to the z-axis since I'm going to be looking at it down the z-axis. And what it'll do is it'll UV it for me. So then you just hit project and there's the UVs. I'm going to undo that because I already had mine scaled properly to the UV texture I'm going to be working with but essentially you would just do the exact same process. You'll add your texture and then you just kind of scale it to the first one. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to go assign existing material, Oops. or actually I'm going to assign the new material, or favorite, whatever. I'm just going to assign a Lambert to it. And with that being said, I've got a new Lambert. This is the one I actually had on it before, so this is going to be the new one I'm working with. I'm going to go to where it says color. I'm going to click on the little checker box there. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to the folder here. And I'm going to go and find that Expressions. So one thing you may notice is I used a PNG for this. So let me just open that up for now. In Photoshop, I had this background off. And I just saved it like this as a PNG just so I have a transparent background. You can leave the background on, but I felt like this would get rid of a lot of problems that I might run into later. So you just go into File, Save As, and then Save As a PNG. Quick good tip. Alright, so now that I added my texture uh, to my shader, you can see now it is clear, but the rest of it's still there. Doesn't that look great already? We've got our faces on there. If I go into my UV editor, you can and click on it you can actually see what I did so this is why I scaled it because I'm scaling it to each one of these different expressions so I scaled it to this one just to have it all set up so I'm going to close my UV editor for now we're not going to really need it and what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go to my object I'm going to go to my channel box over here I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to add an attribute so what adding an attribute does is, if we go into our channel box right here, you see you have translate, rotate, scale, and visibility. We're going to add a secondary, another one right here. So for the long name, I'm going to put it as 
eyes. And for the override nice name, just for whatever shows up, I'm going to do eye texture. Oops. All right. I'm going to make sure that the data type is set to integer. Integer. It's just going to make things work better. And for the minimum and maximum uh, properties, is going to be different for each person. So you always want your minimum to be zero. And what your maximum is going to be is essentially, if we look at our photos right here, I've got 12 of these expressions. So I'm going to actually take 12 and then I'm going to subtract one from that 12. So in this case, I'm going to put it to maximum as 11. The reason I'm doing that is because the minimum of zero is going to count for one on itself. So zero to 11 is technically 12 different options. I'm then going to go to add and there's my eye texture. That's perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to get my 2D texture placement. So what I'll do is I'll go into my hypershade, have that come up there. And what I'll do is I'll look through my shader. I'm just going to graph it so it's easier to see. And I'm going to find my place 2D texture right there. That's going to be very important for us to use. So I'm just going to close out of there for now because it did pop up in my channel box. So that's what we need. I'm going to select my offset U and offset V. And then I'm going to go to edit. And then I'm going to go to set driven key. What that will do is it'll set this, this window up for me. And this way I could kind of set up how I want my project to work. So for the driver, I'm going to select my eyes or the, uh, the model for it. And I'm going to hit load driver. I'm going to click on eye texture. So what this is saying is I could key different things and that data will go from the offset U and offset V, which is going to be very important. I'll explain that in a bit. Is going to go into the eye texture data to my eye model. So now that I have all this set up, we're ready to go. So let's just go and pretty much prep this character up. So what I like to do is I'll probably get a pen and a piece of paper just to write down my data. So what I'll end up doing is numbering in this case 0 to 11 just so I have an, a reference of my data but I'll put it in the Photoshop file just so you can see it for yourself. So we're going to be only focusing on U and V. If I increase let's just say this offset U to 0.3 Oops. if it wants to play nicely let me actually go to my eye texture and then I'll go over here I'll go to my offset U put it at 3 and as you can see it's switched to a different part of the texture and what it's doing is I'm moving my uh, 2D placement to a different location of my face so as you can see, my texture kind of skewed over a little bit. Easier way to see this is if I move this over here and I'll change this back to zero. And as you can see, the eyes went back to normal. Everything within this bounding box in my UV editor is going to be important and all it's going to do is going to tile throughout the whole situation. So since the first one is set up already correct, I'm going to go back to my place 2D texture. I'm going to highlight the offset U and offset V, make sure they're both zero. And what I'll do is I'll select the two of them and then I'll go and hit key. What that does is now if I go to my eye right here, let me close out of this so we don't need it. Let me close out of that so we don't need that. So if I go to my eye right here, zero is now set to this location of the eye. So what that means is if I switch this to one and hit enter, go back to my place 2D texture, and let's just say I put this at 0.3, it will go over to the next row of my texture. So if I look at it, my UV editor, let me select the face again, it's still, my UVs are staying in the same place, but the texture is moving with it. So now it just kind of moved everything to the left a little bit. So now that that's all set, what I'll do is I'll hit key, and now it's set to eye texture of one. So if I type in zero, it'll go there. If I type in one, it'll go there. 
And now this process is going to be a little bit of a touch and go because you're going to want to find out the best area for it. So like if I type in 0.4, you see how it's kind of going in a weird area. So the only reason I have this one done like that at 0.3 is just because it worked. So for you, it's going to be a little bit of trial and error at the first part. But that's why I told you to get a pen and paper. So what I'm going to do is if I look at my character right here, this sheet, what I can end up doing is, let me get my pen. I'll put over here, this is zero. Ooh, let me get a better brush than that. So let's get a hard brush and let's change the scale down. So this is going to be zero. All right. So what I put for the first one is zero for the U, zero for the B, uh, for the V. So the next one's going to be one. This will be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So now I have the twelve faces all set up. This one's at zero and zero. And if I go back to back to Maya, so let me pop that back up. The offset U for the second one is 0.3, offset V is zero. So I'm just gonna double check that this is the correct face. So I'll just go in there. That is the correct face. So what I'll do is for number one, I will type in, or I'll, in this case, I will write down 0.3 and then zero. So this is going to start us off in figuring out how things are going to work. So for the next one, number two, I'll go in, I'll select the face. I'm gonna type in two this time. I'm going to bring up my expression editor wherever it went. There it is. Let me get rid of my UV texture editor. We don't need that. So I'll bring up my place 2D texture. So already set it to two. Place 2D texture is already selected. I already know that the offset V is going to be zero. And the reason that's going to be zero is that's going to along the X axis kind of. And uh, it's just going to make things easier when we're moving around. So for this one, let's just try six. And that kind of works, but as you can see, it's not really centered. I can actually look at this in the front view, make it even a little bit easier to see. Let me move it and zoom in on it. So in this case, I'm going to need to adjust this a little bit more. So I'm going to go in. And let's try 6.62. That looks really good. That looks pretty centered. If I want, I could always raise it or lower it. So what I would do is I would go to place 2D texture, and then I would type in for the, the V portion of it. Just say if I put 0.2, that was way too much. So let's go back to zero, try 0.1. Nope, too much as well. So again, it's going to be a lot of trial and error, but once you get the hang of it, let's try zero one. Nope, that's too too much. Eh, it'll be fine at zero. But once you get the hang of it, things get a lot easier. So now I'm going to key this. So at point six two and zero. So now I'm just going to double check. So that's good. I'll go in, and I'll type pretty much write this down here. So this was at. 0.62 and 0. Because of this, I now have a lot of the information I need. Because I know all these are down one line like that, I now know that all these are going to start for the use for the out the uh, offset are going to be 0. All of these are going to be 0.3. All these are going to be 0 0.62. And again, these are kind of just going and hoping that these are all evenly spaced out. In this case, I don't think they really were in the end, but they'll be close enough. So now that I've got one row done, I actually have all these columns for at least the U's done. So now let's get the V's for the next column. 
So let's just go back in and let's find my editor again. So let's do number three. So number three, I'm going to go to place 2D texture. And like I said before, we already know what the offset U is from the first row, so that's going to be zero. The V, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit of trial and error. So let's go 0.5. And what I like to do is I'll kind of go back and forth to see if it's the correct one. So as you can see, 0.5 is not really good for that one. It would be good for if I was doing number six, but we're doing number three. I also recommend going in order. It's going to make things a lot easier. So let's try 0.7. That's getting closer. Let's try 0.74. That looks good. We might, let's see, do we want to go 0.75? Uh, that looks even better because it actually keeps up the, the eyebrows. So with that being said, I'll go back into Photoshop and I will write in my 0.75. So this is going to be 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0.75. So now I know the whole row, which makes things go a lot faster. Trust me, when you're solving this for the first time, it's going to be a lot longer. But you kind of get the hang of it, and writing it down definitely saves you a lot of trouble. So there's number three. So now we could go on to number four. And at this point, I already know the info for it, so I can just go in, 0 and 0.75, so I'm going to change this to 0.3, so I'll go right to the next one, just select the two of them just to be safe, key it, then we'll do number 5, go there, 0.62, and 75, so that's going to be fine. So I'll key that as well. So now I'm going, I'm able to go through this a little bit faster. Every time we get to another row, we do need to figure things out. So I already know offset U is going to be zero. And just because I already have my numbers written out, let's try five. That looks pretty good. So same deal go into Photoshop or if you want to write it down that works too so 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 go on back in to there so I'll key that oops let me just where'd that go we'll key that and then we're on to number seven and now we all we know all the numbers for there. So number seven is going to be 0 0.3. Oops, 0.3. And we're gonna go and key those. Now that I've got number seven done, let's move on to number eight. I'm just gonna go type in eight. Go over here, and this is going to be 0.62. And we'll select them and key them again. And then we're going to move on to number nine. So number nine is where it's going to get a little difficult again, just because we have a new number to work with. And doing so is going to be simple. So it's going to be zero. And let's try, let's go, oops, go back to it. So zero. And let's try 0 0.25. Uh, yeah, that looks good. I might want to go a little lower. Let's try 0.26. Yeah, that, that's better. So we'll go key that one. Do number 10. Go on in. So. Then we know it's going to be 0.3, because the same row as before. So go like that. Just out of habit, I'm just going to write in, just so we have a reference to it. So 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. 
and obviously you wouldn't save over this but I'm just using it for reference so or 0.26 my bad so I'll key that up next is the last one which is number 11 which will be point six two based on the other numbers we'll go and key that as well so at this point all of our expressions are on our eye texture so if I click on it and scrub through we could just kind of get a quick look to see how it goes and they might not match up perfectly you could always edit those but it's not gonna matter too too much because of their expressions so <clears throat> with that being said we're in good shape so next thing I'm gonna do is I'll save this out and we'll go back to our original file so let's just go and just open this up real quick Hit continue so now I have the file added to my character <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is what I'll do is I set mine at negative 0 0.01 and that's going to place it one small speck in front of the face this way it won't be kind of going inside and outside the face itself and the next thing I'll do is I'll select it and in this case I have my joints seem to be locked so let's see there we go so I'll select my face my control and I'll go into my rigging and I'll do a parent constraint this way if I ever go and let me select my control rotate the head oops did I do that the wrong order I did so my bad control then the face and then the parent constraint this way when I rotate face or the head everything moves nicely and then I can just select my face and I can adjust the texture however I need isn't that great and that's all there really is to it so I hope you like this and learn something have a nice day